Hey everyone, this is Reaper Session I use for our live streams. It manages 30 plugins, six tracks of audio, monitoring, mix minus, and a stereo mix down, live and in real time. Did I mention it does all this? While routing 14 tracks of audio over the network to the four PCs in the studio. And just to keep things interesting, it has to do it for three and a half to four hours with zero X runs. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I configure my workstation using Debian 12 and Jack. And by workstation, I mean a system designed to run a DAW. Not a system designed to run a DAW, watch YouTube videos, chat on Discord, maybe play some games. All right, first things first, we need to head over to Debian.org so we can download the latest Debian 12. We're going to save that, write that image to a flash drive. And before we install, I'm going to head into my BIOS. Here, I'm going to disable global C state control, aka frequency scaling. This is going to cause the CPU to always run at the selected frequency. And speaking of frequencies, I'm going to clock this 5600G at 3 gigahertz. That's 900 megahertz below the base clock, but it's a good balance between power and performance. Now let's install Debian 12, just like we would any other Linux distribution, but we're going to make some changes right here at the software selection. I'm going to ditch GNOME in favor of XFCE, and I'm going to enable an SSH server. And I'm using XFCE because it's lightweight, stable, and uses X11 instead of Wayland. Let's finish the install. We're going to give it a reboot. Now it's time to crack open a terminal and we're going to get to work. First things first, we need to install a real-time kernel. I'm going to find out the running kernel, do a search for that image. There it is. Now we can install it with app. Up next, purge all the pipes. Not that there's anything wrong with pipe wire, but it's under heavy development and you don't want that on a production system. Now we're going to install Jack, Pulse Audio Bridge, Firmware, and RTIRQ. And when you're doing this, make sure to enable real-time priority for Jack. Up next is Grub, where I'm going to enable thread IRQs and I'm going to disable all the Spectre and Meltdown mitigations. And reminder, this is a dedicated workstation with no personal information on it. This is not something that you would want to do on your desktop machine. But once that's done, we can update the INET RAM FS image. Up next, we're going to create a blacklist comp file. Here I'm going to tell the system not to load also drivers for Firewire or Intel devices. You want to salt the taste on your box for this, but up next, we're going to be adding RTC and HPET timer permissions. Then we need to set the max user frequency to 3072. And in SysCTL, we're going to add VM swappiness, and we're going to crank the max user watches up to 500,000K, plus some change. Moving over to limits comp, I'm going to set the RT priority and mem lock for the audio groups. Then I'm going to add the user to the audio group. And before we finish up, let's just go ahead and set some default values for Pulse Audio in case we end up using that. And that's it. Time for a reboot. Back on the desktop, I'm going to download and run real-time config quick scan. It's an older application, but it's a good basic sanity check. You see that it's complaining about the CPU governors, but that's irrelevant since we disabled global C states and this machine's locked at 3 gigahertz. The warning about tickless timer support can be safely ignored. I've never had a problem with it. And for good measure, I'm going to clean up the desktop a bit, starting with workspaces. We only need one. Then I'm going to nope all these notification plugins. And finally, let's take a look at session startups and get rid of things we don't need, like power management, print queues, a screen locker, and just notifications in general. Now we need to do the thing everyone forgets. We need to break out our motherboard manual and see what USB ports are connected directly to the CPU. You want to avoid USB ports running through the chipset for a couple of reasons, but the main one's going to be latency. Once that's done, go ahead and plug in your device. Now let's take a look at Pavu control and make sure you disable anything not in use. And we're going to go ahead and open up QJack CTL. In the setup menu, I'm going to select the audio interface, set the sample rate to 48K. We're going to put the frames on 128 and the periods. That's my system default for pretty much everything. And of course, you want to make sure you have real-time enabled and set the server to use synchronous mode. Under the Mist tab, we want to enable DBoss and Jack DBoss. Go ahead and click Apply, and we need to give QJack CTL a restart. Now I'm going to start the Jack server and open the graph. We have two capture, two playback ports, and you can see it's automatically bridged to Pulse Audio just in case you need to run something that doesn't know what the hell a Jack is. And don't worry, there'll be a link to my setup in the video description. And if you want to see this system in action, head over to Twitch and catch a live stream. Always happy to answer questions in chat after a show. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And if you like what we do, join the team by becoming a patron over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's going to do it for this video. So get out there and make something awesome.